Nick Ferrari at breakfast. Call 0345 6060 well, we've got nine minutes before eight is the time. We'll come back to our conversation. A lot of you still have your views on Nicola Sturgeon, but also be coming back, of course, to our conversation about Rwanda. And we will put some questions to the government ministers with us now, although initially he wants to talk about how there are uplifts for those Britons living on universal credit. I speak of Conservative MP and Pensions Minister Guy Opperman, who joins me now. And this is, of course, as history with 8 million Britons on universal credit and other benefits will get the first chunk of their 650 cost of living payment from July the 14th. Later today, ministers will change laws to give people on low incomes, the elderly and disabled, extra help cash to help cope with soaring inflation. They'll get the first payment in their bank accounts next month. Here with details on that and other benefits that are available, as I say, Minister Guy Opperman. Um, when will all the money then be made available, Minister? Good morning. Good morning. So the position is this, is that we have published uh, the Social Security Payments Bill uh, this morning and we will be debating it uh, over the next uh, couple of weeks in the House of Commons and in the Houses of Parliament. And so it's subject to the uh, will of the people, but um, it is almost certain this will come through in July and there will be a series of uh, payments that will be made over the summer and the autumn, uh, which will provide uh, a further package of support. This is uh, an extra £15 billion worth of support. Uh, there is a series of different uh, measures, but clearly there is the one-off £650 payment, which will be made to over 8 million households on means-tested benefits. That's universal credit, as you outlined, pension credits and legacy benefits. We believe that will go through on about, about the 14th to the 21st of July. You'll be aware that we've also given the £300 in winter fuel payment, which will be on top of the existing winter fuel payment of two to £300, depending on age. And then there will be support for the disabled as well. And then there is households will get £400 of support with their energy bills through an expansion of the energy bill support scheme. And that's at £400 off the potential future energy bill. If you'll accept, and obviously you have all the details to hand and you and your colleagues have worked on this, if you'll accept that not a lot of, some people will not be able to keep up with all of that, can I put it to you that they do need more details? Is there somewhere where my listeners, your voters can go where they can learn more, Minister? Uh, yes, well, there's uh, things are being published on gov.uk, which is the government website, of course, and you know we're coming on to these programmes. The simple truth is this, is that the government is providing an overall package worth £37 billion. Pounds. OK, uh, this particular one is particularly focused on energy bills in the future. Uh, and we believe that will be of massive support uh, over the autumn and the winter period. Uh, there is also support from the Household Support Fund. That's 500 millions of pounds of local support. But the specific thing is that if someone is on means tested benefits, then they know that coming on between the 14th and 21st of July, subject to Parliament's decision, there will be a one-off £650 payment, which is of great assistance. And that's over and above what I'm trying to do today, which is to ensure that we get as many people as possible to apply for pension credit, which is the £3,300 on average uh, sum that um, elderly pensioners uh, can claim but aren't claiming as much as we would like. All right. Um, let's move to other matters. You won't be surprised to hear question concerning the decision last night by the ECHR. What do you understand will be the government's response to that concerning the Rwanda programme? Well, I think there are three key points to make. The first is, oh, self-evidently, the government is disappointed by the decision of the ECHR, given that the British courts uh, were in favour of the decision to uh, create and then run the uh, Rwanda uh, migration agreement. Uh, I think we will consider the judgment. I, I, you would not expect me to be able to give you a definitive answer until such judgment has been provided as as yet. I think it's not even a written judgment as yet. And so, but I do think this is a temporary setback. And I genuinely do think this uh, because as I understand, and clearly I wasn't there, but as I understand the decision last night, this is a temporary stay of the flight and the people going on the flight for there to be greater consideration of the individual circumstances and situation by the UK courts. It is not a, you cannot do this, it is a temporary stay that will then be considered by the UK courts on an ongoing basis. So uh, I believe that the Home Office are continuing with the policy, they will be preparing the next flight, they will be analysing uh, the detail 
of the specific judgment and seeing to what extent uh, they can uh, uh, work around that. I have to say that the, the primary focus, as you know, and you've debated this on your show several times, Indeed. is to preserve human life and to ensure that the people smugglers are stopped. And, you know, we, you will know and your listeners will know we're spending £5 million a day on hotels for migrants. We are spending billions of pounds on the asylum system. We have to reform it. And this is part of the reform. Would you be, there seems to be a growing sense among some conservatives that they should simply ignore this ECHR ruling should be ignored, much as it was with the one concerning the blanket ban on votes for prisoners in the United Kingdom. Would you support simply ignoring the ECHR here? No, I did not. I wouldn't support that. I'm a former lawyer and um, I don't think that is necessary either, with, with the greatest respect. It, it is, there, is, there is a legal process to these types of claim and um, to asylum claims. Now, we can criticise that and we can try and work with it and we can pass laws to deal with that. But ultimately, the law is the law and you must try and work with that. Now, I, I do not believe that we should be blanket withdrawing from uh, or even put it as you put it, ignoring uh, legal judgments at this present stage. I don't believe it is a terminal judgment to the government's cause. What I believe, and obviously I, I'm not 110% on the specifics, is that this is a temporary setback where the uh, ECHR is saying we're not satisfied that the UK courts have considered this in sufficient detail uh, for a final decision to be made. Grateful for your time. Thank you, Guy Opperman, Conservative MP and Pensions Minister, appearing here on LBC where the time is just coming up two minutes before uh, eight the time. Jason in Southampton, thank you for hanging on the line. I did say I would get to you. What do you think the government should do now? Morning. Oh, good morning, Nick. Uh, personally, I think the Rwanda thing should go ahead. Um, I think if we've been through the British court system, they've 